I'm back with the three catacetum orchids in my collection. This year's growing was quite different from the previous year. All of the details coming up at the Orchid Hut. Welcome back to the Orchid Hut. My name is Dana, if you're new here, and thank you for joining me in the video today for the three catacetum type orchids in my collection. Now, if you've been a follower of my channel, I have made many videos on these orchids in the past. Um, one was an extremely detailed repotting video for this Fred Clark After Dark catacetum. And I'll put a link in the upper right hand corner of the screen if you would like to go watch that one because I'll be doing um, a repot of this orchid again today but probably in a much less detailed format. And both of these orchids, uh, these Fred Clark orchids, have bloomed um, for me before and this year I got nothing. Nada. Nothing. You know, not even an attempt at blooming. And um, as we're taking these out of the media today, I will give my impression of maybe why that occurred. Of course, I, I don't know for certain. You know, we're always guessing with our orchids, but I'll give my impression as to why. And um, yeah, so what we're going to do today in this video is we're just going to take these out of the pot. I will probably break away from the video to clean these pots really well because I will be reusing them. Probably not for this one because I think this could probably stand to have a much smaller pot. But in any case, I'll be cleaning these pots and I'll come back with some fresh potting media because these did not bloom this year. The next thing I'm waiting for is the new growth and so I may as well get these out of the old media and have them hopefully set up for better success this growing season so I can possibly get some blooms next winter. All right, so let's go ahead and get started, see what is in the pot. We're starting with the Fred Clark After Dark Orchid. And, um, you know, this one um, was potted at the beginning of the growing season and the one thing I did that was different than the previous year when it actually bloomed for me was I used some cocoa husk. And you know, I don't exactly know, but I'm going to attribute some of the failure here to the cocoa husk. Now, not that the cocoa husk didn't maintain enough moisture, but every time I flushed this pot, there was sort of a um, sort of a rusty red residue coming from the cocoa husk. I am guessing that possibly that was some sort of tannin. And then I'm guessing that maybe that was a little bit too acidic for this orchid. Now, this is 100% speculation on my part, but I did not particularly think you know, at the end of the day, that the cocoa husk was a good idea. Um, there was, of course, sphagnum moss mixed in here, which you can see. And um, I'm just breaking away uh, a lot of the cocoa husk and some of the other particles of media so that you can have a better idea of what the root system looked like. And this root system is now, of course, completely dead and dry because this has not had any water since the fall of last year. And um, the root system was okay, but not great. All right, so let's have a look at the growth. So this was this year's growth. Now, compared in size to the previous year's growth, it was perfectly okay. Um, the little bend at the top here was um, caused by windstorm damage and it kind of toppled over and got a little bit of a scar here, but it didn't really harm the plant beyond that. Um, you know, there would have been nothing else that would have indicated that, you know, 
this was not going to bloom. It was definitely large enough. Uh, the previous year's growth had a bloom right here, and then I believe it had a second one somewhere on the inside. Yes, there was another one right down here. And uh, you know why I didn't get a bloom this year? I just don't know, other than possibly uh, the the watering was a little bit too acidic because of the cocoa husk. All right, so I'm going to set this one aside, and we will come back later and cut away the rest of the root system. This one is um, sort of the black bloom, and you know as I go today and work with these orchids, I'll be inserting pictures of the previous blooming because. As you can see, I have no blooms to show for this year. And again, this one, you know, in the sphagnum moss, in the cocoa husk, um, this one did not develop a great root system. And you can see that this year's growth was smaller than the previous year. So that is not, you know, what you're looking for as you tend to have more mature plants. You want larger growths each year or, you know, at the very least, something that's the same size. Um, so I'm going to have to figure, it how, figure out how to do better with this one this year. Now, this oldest growth right here is completely dry. At first I thought it was maybe going a little bit soft and I was concerned, but really all that's happened here is that the nutrients and moisture from this oldest growth have been reabsorbed back into the plant. So as I'm cutting off the root system, this can be removed. And in fact, it's not that difficult to do right now. It just breaks away. But the rest of the root system on this catacetum did not develop that well. Um, I do not think that I really watered or fertilized these plants any differently than I had the year before. So. The only thing I can contribute this to is the cocoa husk, which I will not be using again this year. All right, so I'm going to set that one aside. And the smallest one here, this one was a little tiny growth that broke away from the previous catacetum, and I thought, well, you know, is it going to do anything? It did attempt the tiniest little new growth right here. And not even as big as what I started with, so that was not necessarily a success, but there was a little bit of a root system here, and I'll be cutting that away and hoping that it will maybe do a bit more for me this year, although, you know, every time you plant something like this, it is um, a good bit of a long shot that it's going to be successful. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to clean up this mess. I'll be back with my clippers so we can cut away the root system. I'll get my new media ready and uh, we will give these a fresh repot. Okay, be right back. Okay, so we are simply going to be cutting away the old root system now, which is dead. Well, that's my grandfather clock dinging. You will uh, hear that in my videos from time to time. I have uh, been winding it lately so that it chimes. Um, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily repot every year and I think for some growers the root system is not completely dead from one year to the next, but for me it always is. So. Um, there's no reason to have that um, continuing to deteriorate in the fresh media that I will be putting this catacetum in. So it all gets cut away. All of the old root system gets cut away. And, you know, if this grows um, in a healthy way, the root system will completely regenerate itself with the season's new growth. So no worries here. Okay. So that is the majority of the old root system cut away. 
it doesn't have to be, you know, cut back all the way to the cane, but I do like to get the majority of it off. That just means there's fewer bits to cause rot in the media later on. And I'm also pulling away some of the dried sheath that's at the bottom of the cane. Okay, so it's not exactly clear where new growth would come from on this last cane. I'm, you know, kind of having a look. I don't see anything that's starting to swell yet. It is a little bit early to expect that, but you can sort of tell here that there's a bit of upward growth. So as I put this in a new pot, I will be trying to kind of level that out a bit and do some good staking of this newest cane so that the new growth will be stable as it puts roots down inside the new pot. Okay, so that's the first one. It's going to get easier and easier as we go here because the plants are smaller and smaller. So again, cutting everything away. And pulling away some of the dry sheath that's at the bottom of the cane. And again, no indication yet that there's new growth on the way, but we'll keep our fingers crossed and hope that we see something soon. Okay, and then the final one. Actually, the root system here is not all that horrible given the small size. Okay, so we'll see what this does. We'll give it a little bit of an opportunity here to grow again this year. See if it wants to do a bit more. Okay, once again, cleaning up the mess and coming back with some clean pots as well as fresh media. Okay, be right back. Okay, so it's actually been a couple of days since I filmed the first part of the video and the trimmed orchids have just been sitting on the counter for a couple of days in a very dry location, absolutely no harm whatsoever. In fact, you can actually do this right after the orchid goes into dormancy and just store the orchids this way in a dry place until they begin to put on new growth. Um, but, um, you know, what we're going to go ahead and do right now, even though there's not any new growth um, appearing just yet, we're going to go ahead and repot these so that when the new growth appears, you know, there's an immediate place for the roots to go without any kind of disturbance. So it's time to go ahead and get these in their new homes. Um, I am going to put a couple of links in the upper right hand corner of the screen right now. The first link is um, a very detailed and comprehensive uh, video about potting a catacetum orchid. And I'm going to go back to that method today. Um, so I'm not going to explain it all in detail again, but if you would like to go back and watch that potting video, I'll put a link in the upper right hand corner of the screen. And then there's also another video that I did about how to care for a catacetum orchid um, as it is going into dormancy and how to kind of like store it over the winter and uh, much more detailed than this video. And so if you would like to go back and watch that one, uh, you may get a few little more, you know, tidbits and pointers from that video. 
Okay, so without going into all of the detail in those videos again, I do have my three pots for my three orchids. Um, star foam, uh, packing peanuts in the bottom, a layer of sphagnum, and then um, the mix is just my regular Phalaenopsis mix with some extra sponge rock in it, and that is pretty much it. Now we are going to have to stake these so that they're very stable in the pots. And we're going to start with the smallest one, which was which does not have packing peanuts in the bottom, simply because the pot is you know kind of so small to begin with. But I'm just going to make just a little kind of a nook right there. And you know, this doesn't need much. And we're going to put the stake in. And hopefully this tiny little clip right here will do the trick. Okay, and that is stable as is. So I will kind of be leaving this one undisturbed until it decides to put on new growth. Okay, keeping it dry, dry, dry until there are visible roots all the way down inside the pot. Okay, so that's the easiest and first one. The middle-sized one, which is now down to two canes again, there's the sphagnum moss in the bottom. We'll be putting that bark sponge rock mix next. I really don't think that it is necessary to fill this up to the very tip top. I'm just going to make just a little spot for that. And I believe I want to stake the older growth here. And we'll use a butterfly clip for this one, just like that. Maybe press it down just a bit. And there we are, you know, ready for new growth on that particular bulb. Hopefully, um, being potted in something a bit more shallow will actually help the root system in this case. You know, it's not a very big catacetum. It doesn't need to be overwhelmed by a super large pot or too much bark. All right, there we go for that one. And the final one prepared the same way. And in fact, this is the very same pot with the blue tape that you'll see in the video link. If you go back and watch those older videos. And this one, you know, needs a little bit of sideways attention. It's kind of got this, um, what I would call uphill growth. And so we're going to be, I think what I'll do is I'll stake this latest, well, maybe not, I think I will stake the second to the oldest growth here. And once I see where the new growth is, I may very well Uh, stake the latest growth from last year as well just to make it a bit more stable. These uh, little strands of sphagnum are simply what was already included in the Phalaenopsis bark mix.
And I may just adjust this just a little bit so that the newest bulb has a bit more room there on the edge of the pot. Okay, very nice. All right, so this is now really stable in the pot. We can put the tag back. And we can put the tag back in this one as well. The smallest one that we did right at the start is also like the second one here. And since I only have three, it's very easy to remember which one it is. Okay, so um, I'm going to hope that the change in bark will give me better results as far as blooming next season. And um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. The subscribe button is coming up in the bottom right hand corner of the screen and don't forget the notifications bell to let you know when I've posted something new. Thank you all so much for watching and talk to you in the next Orchid video.